Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Just Janice podcast. I am your host, Janice, and we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So in this joy-filled podcast, you're going to hear real-life stories from other believers. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to magnify Jesus, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode. I am so excited that you're joining me today because today I'm actually going to be sharing a little bit of my story with you. So before I get into that, I want to start out with reading you a paragraph from the book that I am working on called Slay and Singlehood, Celebrating Life in Every Season. And so it's all about just my journey through singlehood and what God has taught me during this time and just the beauty then the gift that we can find in singlehood um, that I think a lot of people really just try to skate past and get through quickly. Um, I just want people to, to know that their life doesn't begin or end with a relationship. And so that is what the heart of this book is, just to encourage people to enjoy being single and just to know that God has purpose inside the season of being single. And so I'm going to start out with reading you a paragraph from my chapter called Heal the Hurt. And then I am going to just talk about my story. So here goes. Life isn't always mountaintops, sunshine, rainbows, and butterflies, although I would be happy if it was. My ideal world would be filled with sparkly moments, laughter, dancing, and unlimited Reese cups. I would love it if it only rained colorful confetti and the wind blew our best wishes into fruition, but in a fallen world, that just isn't reality. There are hurtful and unfair points on our path of life where we are forced to navigate and trudge through valleys, trenches, and potholes so deep they'll knock the fender off your car. Hello, Michigan backroads. Even in the most unfair and undeserving circumstances, we never have to adopt a victim mindset. There is always victory, healing, and freedom for us that is found in Christ. So as I share my story with you today, I just want to start out by saying that I never share my story in an attempt to slander anyone or make anyone look bad. I love to share my story because my story just points so loudly to God's goodness and faithfulness and just the fact that he is such a good healer and just so faithful and loving. And so I just want to start out with saying that, that as I share my story, I'm sharing it because it is my story, but it's never, it's never an attempt to make someone look bad or to put anyone down or anything like that. And so here we go. So my story, I married my high school sweetheart. Um, while we were still in college, I was 21 when we got married And we got married very young, obviously, at 21, and just really didn't know what the heck we were doing. And I was very immature in the Lord at that time, and so it really was not something that I necessarily prayed about too much. I just thought, like, he's a Christian, I'm a Christian, like, what more is there to it? And just didn't really have, like, a depth in my walk with the Lord at that time. Not that that's an excuse, but it was just the reality of my situation. And so anyway, we got married and very early on, um, he got kind of bored with the marriage and just, and he told me that he just felt like it wasn't fresh and new. And so obviously we know that our feelings are flighty. And so we can never base our decisions on feelings, but in his own immaturity, that's what happened. And so it was within a few years of our marriage, he actually started seeing someone at his work and having an extramarital relationship. And it was something that happened and I was super embarrassed about it. And it was something that really not a lot of people knew about when it first happened. We met with our pastors and we just decided to reconcile and that we wanted to make things work out. And then so for the next few years, I just became very numb very numb toward him, very numb toward life in general. I just feel like I really just put a shell over myself and just tried to not allow myself to feel and to think because when I did it hurt. And so it was very easy for me to just put walls up and try to hide behind them, which really just put me in my own prison. And so 
that's pretty much how I felt for a few years, just very numb, numb to life. I was never suicidal or anything like that, but I, I can say confidently that I did not have a love for life during that time. Um, it was a lot for me just to go through the motions and, and do what I had to do as far as go to work. And I was still going to church and stuff, but felt very dead inside that whole entire time. And it was a few years later. I remember the day very clearly. Um, I was actually at the Big V drive through after work one day and we had been texting each other all day and he was being super sweet, which was abnormal, sadly, and sending me all sorts of like really cute text messages and like, I love yous and you know, all the heart emojis and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, like this is like the restoration that I was, have been waiting for. I've been waiting to feel loved again, like I did back when things started for us. And so anyway, it sounds silly that a text message would make me come alive in that way. But because I felt, had felt like I was deprived of that affection and attention for so long, even the silly, like minuscule text messages just were a lot for me, um, which now I know is crazy. But anyway, that's just where I was at at that point. And so I was super excited. I ordered my favorite caramel marvel latte and I sent him a text and I was like, I'm on my way home. I can't wait to see you. And he sent me a text. And it was a big, long text. The worst possible way to break up with somebody. Just so you know. And it said, basically, I don't want to hurt you anymore. And, but, um, I'm, I left and he let me know that he had started seeing the same woman that he had been seeing a few years prior again, and that he didn't want to be in our marriage anymore. And so obviously I was devastated. I went to my mom's house and I remember walking in and just collapsing in her arms and and just crying because like in moments like that, it's like, what do you even say? I mean, the pain is so deep and the hurt is so, so, I can't even describe it. It's just like betrayal and abandonment in that way is, it's indescribable. It feels like a death. It feels like just all of the life that was in me, which felt like very little at that time was just sucked out of me. And I just felt like I had nothing left inside of me. And so I just cried and my mom held me and I went home and thank God for amazing sisters in Christ. And this is just a plug and a shout out that if you are a believer and you see a sister going through heartache, just be there for her. Like in that moment, I didn't need advice. I didn't need someone to tell me what to do or whatever. I just needed someone to be there for me. And I remember my friend Deb coming over and sleeping on an air mattress on my living room floor with me just because um, I just didn't want to be alone. And so she walked with me through that. And um, the relationship with, with her didn't last very long um, between my ex-husband and his whatever you want to call her, mistress or whatever. Didn't last very long. They broke it off. And then um, he tried his hardest to work things out again. And I actually was really seeking God at that point about what am I supposed to do? Because I never signed up to get married and get divorced in seven years. Like that was never my plan. I meant my vows when I said them and I meant them with everything inside of me. I never in my life imagined that I would be in my 20s as a Christian woman, nonetheless, and be getting a divorce. There's just such a stigma on that, especially as a Christian, that that is so taboo to get a divorce. And I am never someone who will advocate divorce ever. I will never advocate divorce. It is such a heart-wrenching thing to go through, but I do believe there are circumstances where you need to get out. (laughs) And when there is serious abuse and there is infidelity happening like it's you you need to get out I just think that a lot of times people do get out of divorce do go through a divorce or end their marriage for stupid reasons uh, for lack of better words I'm trying to sound nice about that but honestly just for stupid piddly reasons and and we don't take our marriage covenant seriously enough and so when someone else comes along that catches our attention or 
or whatever just feels old or we just are tired of this person we trade someone in as if someone is a material object that can be traded in and that's sad so I was just really seeking God about what to do and over and over again he just kept showing me that I needed to get out and so I did I filed for a divorce and he just showed himself so faithful to me during that time I I like I said felt very numb went through a lot of physical things with my body just acting weird and um, not being able to eat for several days and just having no appetite and just crying a lot and just feeling very, very numb. But in those moments, I turned to the Lord in such a deep and beautiful way. And I'm just so thankful for that time that drove me to that place. Not that God ever, ever intended for me as his daughter to go through heartache and pain in the way that I did because it was very diff- it was very difficult. And I know that it broke his heart and he cried with me as he bottled every tear that I, that I cried. But in those moments, I felt him so near, like the Bible says, he's near to the brokenhearted. And I felt that nearness so tangibly in that season. Over the last few years, I've been divorced now for four years. I didn't say that earlier, but I've been divorced now for four years. And so in the beginning parts of that, I could just feel his presence so thick and him just working in my heart and healing it. The Bible also says that he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And I love I just love that verse because it's so true. And I just have seen that verse just magnified in my life. And so through the process of the last four years, I've just really grown in the Lord and just gotten into the word and, and, um, in prayer and deeper, more personal ways than I've ever experienced and just having that intimacy with him on greater levels than I ever did. And so I just want to share all of this, not even to talk about what my husband did to me, because to be honest, it doesn't even matter. I want to talk about how good God is and how faithful he is and how much he loves you. And so if you are going through heartache or pain of any kind, whether it's from a failed marriage or it's abuse that you suffered from a parent or a coworker, whatever it is, whatever has caused you heartache. God wants to heal that part of you. He wants to heal it in such a way that people can literally hear your story and be like, I can't believe that that actually happened to you because you don't have a victim mindset. You don't act like you're a victim to your circumstances. And that's that's the beauty of Christ. He redeems everything in our lives. And we don't have to live in that pit that the enemy has dug for us and thought that we would stay in. So I want to talk to you guys about shalom. So shalom is the Hebrew word for peace. Shalom has such a deeper, richer meaning than just the word peace. And I think a lot of times when we hear that word, we think, oh, shalom, peace. But it actually means harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. And so I believe that God wants shalom, his perfect wholeness in every single area of our lives. And so I just pray for that for you, that if you have something that's broken inside of you, maybe something that you've never even shared with anyone else, that you allow God to be your Prince of Peace, that you allow him to make you whole in every way, to heal every part of you so that you can walk forth in complete victory and complete freedom from anything from your past, from anything that's been done to you or from anything that you yourself have caused. I mean, a lot of times we, we make stupid mistakes, but you know what? God, God is so good and faithful. He covers those too. He covers the things that people do to us and he covers the things that we, in a sense, bring on ourselves. He understands and he knows, and he still chooses to heal us and make us whole. And so I hope that this encourages you and blesses you just to know that none of us have ever walked a perfect path in life. None of us have ever you know, gotten through life without some scratches. And you know what? We fall down and we scrape our knees, but we get back up. And so I just want to encourage you that if you have went through hurtful things that you can get back up, that you can run your race and you can run it well, that you don't have to hold on to things from your past, that God can help you just 
get rid of all of that stuff so that you don't have to have anything weighing you down or holding you back or, or taking your mind captive. I think a lot of times we get hung up just in that area alone in our mind where we are just constantly replaying things from our past, things that we've gone through or suffered through. And God wants to give us peace in that area too. And so I am just starting a new book that my friend Barb got me. And there is a part in the book that I want to read to you. And then I want to pray for you. So this says his glory, his power, his kingdom, the favor and unfathomable love and mercies and compassions of the father himself will wrap around your physical body, your mind, your soul like a mantle. For it is he, the faithful one, the kindest and most tender one of all the very balm of Gilead himself, who reaches out his arms toward you today, tenderly entreating you out of abandonment and bids you come. And I love that so much where it says entreating you out of abandonment, because that's very much how I felt in my marriage. I felt very abandoned. I felt very alone, even during the times where we were trying to work things out. I I still felt that abandonment inside of me because, you know, our covenant was breached. And so I I felt very abandoned and alone and even like I couldn't talk about it. And um, in moments when I even would try to, um, I would be told not to. And so I just am so thankful for freedom in Christ. And that is how I always want to use my story is just to bring him glory and to point to the fact that he is good. He is still on the throne. He has never left his throne and he never will leave his throne. And so if you're feeling abandoned or anything like that, please reach out to me. I will never say that I understand how you feel because I feel like all of our situations are different. Our personalities are different. Our upbringing is different. Our experiences are different. So I can never say fully that I understand anything that anyone's gone through. But I can say that I understand what it feels like to go through heartbreak, to feel abandoned, and just to feel like just numb in life and like you just don't even have a joy for living and I can also tell you what it's like to have the joy of the Lord and that is my strength and that just to know what it's like to walk in healing and wholeness to be able to think clearly again which is something that I took for granted because I forgot what that was like for a very long time to even be able to form a sentence that made sense and that sounds so crazy for me to even say but I remember going for a very long time where I constantly felt like my mind was stuck on my pain and my heartache and what I had gone through. And so I was constantly filtering all of my thoughts through that. And it was like so hard for me to even think straight or speak clearly. And I remember the day that that lifted. And that is something too that I write about in my book um, that I, that I'm going to share in my book. But I remember that day very clearly where I had been praying and praying and praying In the first several months after my separation, my divorce may not have been finalized yet, but we were separated. And I remember praying and praying and praying over my mind that God would heal my memories. And I, I knew that memories that I went through, I mean, they weren't going to go away, but my prayer was that my memories wouldn't hurt me anymore and that I could just think clearly. I just felt like there was this constant fog over my mind where I was always just weighed down by it. And I couldn't think clearly, like I said. And so I remember being on my way to work one day and I was praying because that's what I do on my way to work and um, just praying and seeking God. And I remember coming up over the hill on Jonesville Road. If you guys are from around where I live, you'll know exactly where that is. But coming up over the hill on Jonesville Road on my way to work. And as I got to the top of the hill, the, oh, the sunset, the sunrise, I was on my way to work, the sunrise was so beautiful. And I just remember that fog just lifting off me. It was like, I could tangibly feel that fog lifting off me. And I could think clearly for the first time. It was like, oh my gosh, this is what living is. This is what thinking is. This is what, this is what God created me to function. Like I'm, I just couldn't believe that I had been under that feeling and oppression for so long that I could tangibly feel what it felt like when it lifted. And so anyway, I just want to pray over that too. If there's anyone on here that feels like they have mind fog or like your thoughts are constantly being filtered through pain from your past or things that you have gone through um, that weren't fair, that you didn't deserve, 
but you're still struggling with, I'm going to pray for that too. So, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have gone through heartache or you're dealing with pain from your past that you just don't know how to process. And I am more than willing to talk to you. That is my heart that I'm not doing this podcast just so I can hear myself. Like I want you guys to get something out of these episodes and I want them to minister to you. And sometimes we need to talk more than the 20 minute podcast. And so please feel free to reach out to me. My email is janice.regal at gmail. You can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook at Janice Regal. That's R-I-G-E-L. So you can feel free to reach out to me. Like I want to connect with you guys. And that's my heart is just to, just to restore, restore voices to people that have gone through heartbreak. And so, yeah, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for every listener on this podcast. God, I thank you for Shalom. I thank you for your perfect peace, God your perfect peace, Lord. And I just speak that over every single person that's listening right now. God, and I thank you that you are the perfect healer, that you heal the brokenhearted. God, you are near to the brokenhearted. And so I pray over every single person who has suffered heartache and pain of any kind and is still dealing with the ramifications of it. God, at first just break shame off them, Lord. God, that It could be something that happened to them years and years and years ago, and they even feel embarrassed that they still struggle with it. God, I just break that shame off them right now in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you for their vulnerability and their willingness to hand that hurt to you, God. Even if that means their heart is in a million pieces and they're having to scoop it up and hand it to you in that way, God, I thank you that they're willing to hand their heart to you, God. And I know that you bind up that broken heart. You piece it back together in such a beautiful way that it can be looked at and not even, no one could even look at that heart and see that it's been hurt, that it's been shattered into a million pieces. God, I thank you that you are a God of restoration, that you are a God of new beginnings. Lord, I thank you that you are doing a mighty work in all of our lives. God, and I thank you for the plans and purposes you have for every single person on this podcast. And I pray that every single one of those plans and purposes will come forth in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for community. I thank you that we can just rally around each other and support each other, but God, that we would be people that would lift each other up out of the pit. Lord, that we would help each other to stand up when our legs are weak. God, that we would speak the truth over each other, to each other, about each other. God, that we would encourage one another with your word and your truth. Lord, I just thank you that you are doing a work and you are faithful to complete it. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen.